Okay, uh, good morning everyone. I think I've managed to get round to every table or nearly every table to say hello. So I'm Sue, Sue McGrath. I'm based in Belfast. So uh, I'm, I'm a team of three people that are looking after the north of Ireland. And um, in the afternoon session, you're going to be split up into workshops. So what I thought I'd do today is just kind of give you a, a, a sample of some of the, the demonstrations that we would do in our workshops or some of the demonstrations that I would have done when I was teaching, which have created laughter and smiles and, and that lovely warm feeling we get about when we're playing with physics. Uh, so I'm going to start you off with a, with a practical. And uh, each of you have got a bag on the middle of the table. So if you can claim your bag. And you've also got a cup. Claim your cup. And what I've tried to do as you were coming in, I've tried to make sure that there's at least four of you on a table. Um, so what I'd like you to do now also, where you're sitting, starting from the edges, I want you to number yourselves one to three. If there's just four of you on a table, then you're going to have one, two, one, two. If there's five, one, two, three, one, two. Okay? So organize yourselves. You've got your bags. And I want each of you to claim a number. Claim a number. Excellent. Hands up if you're number one. Hands up if you're number two. Hands up if you're number three. Hands up if you don't know who you are. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so we're going to come to those in a minute. So what I've done is I've given you a straw. To cut, to cut down the time, what I've done is I've already prepared the straws for you. So a straw we would kind of usually use when, whenever we're drinking. Okay, so I'm going to come to the physics behind using a drinking straw in a minute. But what we're going to do here, instead of us kind of using that very fast movement of air to kind of draw the liquid up, we're going to blow down the straw. So what I've done is I've cut the ends of the straw. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold it one centimeter behind where the cuts finish so that the, it looks like a beak of the bird. You've got one flap up at the ceiling and one flap down at the ground. And uh, so it's about one finger width behind where it cuts. And if you gently squeeze it, you should see the beak open and close. Can you see that? And what you're going to do is you're just going to hold it nice and loosely. You're going to hold it, and then you're going to put the whole of the beak into your mouth. And you're going to let your lips touch your fingers. And then you're going to very gently squeeze the straw, and you're going to blow down the straw. When you blow down the straw, not all of the air leaves. Some of it at the end will bounce back. So you're going to end up having pressure difference inside. As you blow down the straw, the air inside the straw is going to go really fast. So the air outside is much closer together, moving slower, and it's going to cause this straw to collapse inside your mouth. But the air that bounces back then is going to increase the pressure and it's going to open up. And you're going to keep blowing, it's going to close and open up and close and open up and close. And if we can get it to open up and close more than 20 times a second, we should be able to hear something. Okay? So very gently, Put it into your mouth, squeeze it, and blow hard. Okay. Brilliant. Um, you don't just have one straw, you've got two straws. So what I want you to do now is to get your second straw and let's do some engineering. Let's join them together. Let's make them longer and then try to get that sound again. Now, if you found you didn't get the sound, make sure that the whole of the piece that's cut is inside your mouth. Now, when the session finishes, um, you get a coffee break. If you've not managed to get the sound, you can catch me and I'll go through it again. So as the straw gets longer what happens to its pitch so stop the noises now obviously in a class this would take the whole lesson I'm just kind of giving you a whole a whole load of ideas um, so as the straw gets longer it takes more time for the air to go down and bounce back 
So the time in which this opens and closes is going to be longer. So the slower the vibrations, the lower will be the sound. So if you get scissors, you can then, obviously, Friday, last class, okay, otherwise the teachers will, will annoy you, you'll be able to make all those sounds there. Now, with a cup, all you need to do is make a little kind of hole here, and you can attach that to your straw, and then you're going to get more air in contact with those vibrations, so more energy is going to leave the system, and you're going to get a louder sound. So just look in at pitch, first of all, the shorter the straw, faster vibrations, higher the pitch, okay, the longer it becomes, the slower, the lower, and then you can use amplification using the cups. So that's just one silly one that we've got. You've also got a balloon inside your bag. Don't, I don't want you, normally I would get you to play with this, but just find it. And you also have inside the balloon a very small hex nut. So empty that hex nut out and put it into the palm of your hand so that you can see it. Okay? Put it back into the balloon. All right? And, and if you wish, you can blow your balloon up. But make sure you just tie it off halfway through so you can undo it and uh, put it back into the bag, okay? Or you can just put it in your hands. With the nut inside, as you start to move it, that because of its those, those sides, the edges will hit the balloon and then not hit the balloon, then hit the balloon and not hit the balloon. And it will push energy into the system and you'll then be able to get resonance. Now, if I'd been really good, I'd have given you a really cool balloon and uh, you'd be able to get it to squeak. So with white balloons, you can draw your faces. It can be Moni Myrtle from um, Harry Potter. Okay, so we've got all that going. So, stop that. We'll finish that one. Undo your balloon. Let the air loose. Oh, it's gone. And stick it back in your bag. Stick it back in your bag. Now, oh, I'm feeling really thirsty. So, if you go online, you can buy big straws like those. Sometimes, if you're lucky enough, you might find them in the Asda. And uh, I like these ones, because if I go to the cinema, I can just put my drink on the floor. I don't have to worry about it. And then I can drink. Now, mm, I've just managed to get water that's on the table to go upwards against gravity, against gravity, and it ended up in my mouth. How did I do that? How was I able to make this liquid defy gravity? So what process happens in my mouth when I put the straw in and then I, I do something? What do I do? I suck. So I'm changing the speed of the air. I'm making the air go faster. And, uh, and we use this in weather systems. We use this a whole load of times in... in um, and physics at home. Now this little toy here, we can use to kind of get sounds, but I'm not gonna use it for that. We're gonna use this to think about a straw, and I'm gonna need a volunteer, someone really brave. Someone really brave. Oh, oh okay, up you come. I was about to pick on a, a victim, but you're, you're, you're great, amazing. Now, unfortunately, you might hit yourself on the head. Okay, try not to do it. What's your name? Alex. Alex. Now, what Alex is going to do, he's going to put his left hand above my hand here, and then using your right hand, you're going to swing that above your head. Okay? Brilliant. Swing. Now, try not to hit yourself on the head, and you can go yee-haw if you want. Yee-haw! Fantastic. <laughs> now, keep that. Stay there. Now, keep going. Can we see that that end is definitely going faster than this end? Okay, so this is now my cup of milk. And uh, when I put the straw into my milk, I can get just through that difference in the speed of the... Oh, no. It was snow, but look at the mess you've just made in here. What do we have at home that looks like this that will clear up this mess and don't say mum? <laughs> A vacuum cleaner. So inside, give Alex a big round of applause. Alex, thanks very much for that. So with our vacuum cleaner, 
we're, we're not going to have lots of small Alex inside the machine go <laughs> doing this. So we, we're going to use electricity and we get a fan that's going to move the air and we get that change in pressure. So as the air is drawn in, any small bits that are moving with it can be drawn in as well. Now, Hoover was one of the first engineers that looked at those systems. Uh, but the problem with the very first vacuum cleaners is as the bag filled up with dirt, the amount of air that could move got less and less, and so therefore the suction disappeared. So we've got an engineer that's still alive so you can talk about a scientist that's alive, that has actually changed the design of our vacuum cleaners so that the dirt goes into a different section so the suction stays the same. So what's his name? Dyson. Dyson, and he's awesome. So he's employing a lot of our students now. So I've made a complete mess there. Um, now this one here, this one is quite dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to need another volunteer for that one. We need da I'll become... I love this. Now, what I've got here, I don't know whether you've uh, seen these balloons. If you get a, a helium uh, canister, you get these nice little balloons that go in, and it allows you to put air in, and it stops the air from coming back. Brilliant. What's your name? I'm Callum. Callum. Now, Callum, what I'm going to do, before you arrived in, <laughs> I put some water in here. Okay, and, and what's really nice is kind of got a string here that we can hold, but I'm just going to hold this with my hand. And, and if I place this on the, let's say on the table, okay, it's got a certain amount of energy, but as I lift it upwards against gravity, it's grain, gaining potential energy. And um, can I get you just to hold it there for the moment? Just hold it at the top from there. Now, if I want a shower, quite often we'll lift water up, put it into a reservoir, and then when we need more energy, we open the reservoir, the water will fall, it will turn the turbines, which moves a magnet within a coil, and we generate electricity. Now, for us to get, so Callum, come over here a minute. For us to get this water to fall, so that you can have your morning shower, okay, what do I have to do here? I, I can put a hole in it, so let's be a little bit more exciting. Find out how can I burst this balloon? A flame! I love that idea. So hold that again. So what I kind of thought was, it's going to ignite the flame. We could use this, or we could use this. Okay, so there's my flame. Now, because I'm such a nice scientist, okay, Callum, look what I've got. Oh, so kind. I am. You hold that there for a minute. Okay, so look. Now, take that, I'll take this, no, uh, I'll take this. So now, this is the best bit. If it was me, I would let you use the umbrella. But this is not my demo, it's, it's for you guys. So are we going to allow Alex to use the umbrella? No. Oh, Callum. Oh, oh, Callum, sorry about that. I got so excited about using the wrong name. Oh, and it burst all over the floor. And this is what happens sometimes when you're doing experiments and they go wrong. And you have to explain to your kids, well, we'll do it again. But I can't because I only had one balloon. So Callum, Sorry. take a bow. That's OK. No, it's my fault. And uh, what I was going to do, you weren't actually going to get wet. What I was going to do is I was going to put this against the skin of the balloon with the water. And the water's got such a high specific heat capacity, it actually takes the heat away from the balloon so the balloon doesn't burst. And then I would have moved the flame just above the water level, and it would have burst, and it would have been caught inside the balloon. Sorry, guys. And it wouldn't have gone all over the floor the way it has just done now. So it's much funnier when it goes wrong, anyway. So take a bow. Well done. Oops. That was a big oops. Well, forget about that one. So that one is quite good fun. And as you've realized, sometimes it doesn't work. So you can always choose the student that you do want to get wet, and they can actually get wet. Now, I'm going to move on. I'm going to finish off with a whole range of demos that are going to be looking at electricity. Because electricity is one of the topics that uh, quite a lot of us find difficult to get the concepts over with everyone. And so first of all, before we do this, uh, I want to introduce you to your diodes. Now, in your teams, OK, you are one, two, three, or one, two. Uh, I, I want you to, inside your cup, there's a battery. And number one, you are going to find, using your battery, the red diode that's in your bag, OK? Now, when you take your diode out, 
and you will see one leg of the diode is longer than the other one. It's that longer leg that goes onto the flat positive side of the battery. And what you're going to do is you're just going to put the battery between the legs and we can hold them there, okay? So if you're number one, you're going to get the red one. If you're number two, you're going to find the green one. And if you're number three, you're going to find the blue one. If you don't have a three in your team, that means you're number two, you're going to be holding both the red and the green. And what we're going to do, once, once you've got your bulbs lit, hold them up so I can see that everyone in the room is with me, we're going to turn the lights down a little bit and your cup is now going to be your stage. So you're going to first of all shine the red one in. You have one cup between three, just use one of the cups. Shine the red one in first, and then the green one's going to go in next to it, so it's shining alongside. Just use one cup, one cup between two, and then finally put the blue one in, and what color do you see? So you have to be able to see it. Which one's way? Wait, wait. So when you do this, you're looking into this end, looking into that end, and the bottom of the cup is your screen. Not like this, like this, okay? So you're going to be able to see the colors. So hold, uh, there's two batteries, so hold them so they're pointing in. What color do we get? White. And some of you are going to be going into the lights, cameras, images. You're going to be doing this in a very different way. But again, this is one of the workshops that we'll be carrying out. And uh, can we have the lights back on again? Brilliant. Um, so, you've got the three diodes. I've given you one battery. Um, pound land, pound world. They are the best places to go shopping in. So you're going to get eight of these for a pound. Um, that, that, that it's just a lot of the toys and gadgets that I get, I, I buy from those shops. So if you put your cup, your straw, your balloon, your diode, stick them all into your plastic bag. That is a gift from us for you to take away with you. Yay! Now, your diodes, is that my time? Three minutes, three minutes. Okay, we're there, we're there, we're, there, we're on the route. Now, what I've got here is again in Pound World, I've got these two cups. And they're supposed to be sold for cocktails. They look like fish balls, but uh, fish balls. But what you can also get at Christmas time are these beads. And if you can kind of put them together with different colors, that, that's great. But what I'm doing here is they're at the same level. They're at the same potential. When I lift one of them, I'm changing the potential, and they move. And I can get them to move in two different directions. The further they're apart, the bigger the uh, potential difference, the faster they move. So that's a really nice demo to look at charging and recharging. If you've got a video camera, you can look at the speed. You can count the number of beads that are moving over a certain time. But it's giving them also an idea with the sound that electricity is a movement of charged particles. And one of the machines that we have at school, which is the most difficult one for us to play with, is the Van de Graaff machine. And in a Van de Graaff machine, we're going to have two materials that roll and rub over each other, usually uh, plastic, uh, a, a band over uh, polystyrene or uh, perspex rollers. So my hair, I've got a balloon. I can charge it, steal in the outer electrons, and then I can use that to get something to do a bit of magic, okay? So what I'm doing here is using and showing static electricity giving me the, these particular forces. Now before you came in, I put a few polystyrene beads into a balloon and using a pump, I blew that balloon up. And then when I'm blowing that balloon up, those beads all gain the charge and then I can see that they're all pushing against each other. And then, when I do that, you can actually see that they move to the space that I've put them on. And that is the space that I will use then to get my little tin foil to fly. So again, we've kind of got all that static electricity. And the really cool thing with static electricity is we can kind of get sparks. But if we've got lots of water in the air, water 
is a dipolar molecule. So what you'll find is the two hydrogen atoms will give their electrons down to the, the bottom part of, of, our elect of our oxygen. That's a bit like Mickey and Minnie, okay? And so, so what we've got here, if it's a damp day, your Van de Graaff machine will not work because the water steals the charge. So you're gonna need a, a hairdryer to dry it off. Um, so I'm gonna finish just with a silly little story. So what I've got here is a spark maker. This is from uh, a boiler. So it gives them the spark in the boiler. And we're going to use a pig, OK? And uh, animals, uh, all animals, when they eat food, inside their intestines, there's lots of friendly bacteria, and we make gas. And this gas is explosive. And uh, so what I'm going to do, being a scientist, I'm going to put 40 millilitres of an explosive gas inside pepper pig. Now, Peppa Pig is very, very scared of thunder, okay? And uh, I don't know whether this has happened to any of you before, but listen to this very carefully. Bang! <laughs> Sometimes, when you get a fright, you kind of jump out of your skin. Have you done that, yeah? And when that happens, your muscles tense, and occasionally, by accident, gas escapes. So this is going to happen to Peppa Pig. We're going to put her outside in a thunderstorm. She's going to hear the, the thunder. She's going to jump out of her skin, accidentally release the methane from her bottom. Just as she does that, lightning will strike. Okay. Now, usually as a story, I, I would kind of, we're all going to go one, two, three, four, five. We're going to clap once. She's going to hear the thunder, and I'll get you all to squeal, pigs in space. But we're in London. And uh, my nieces uh, told me that I have to get you all to say, off with her head. Uh, OK, so we're going to go off with her head instead. OK, so we're going to have a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Big clap. That's the thunder. She's going to hear it. She's going to jump out of her skin. We're going to get the lightning. And you're all going to squeal, off with her head. You ready? Five, four. No, no, you all have to do this. OK, five, four, three, two, one. Off with her head. Boom. <laughs> Uh, I'm one of your crazy scientists that's going to be helping you any problem that you have with physics. Phone us. Bring us into your schools. We'll give you lots of training. Equipment in your cupboard. We'll show you how it works. So I'm Sue. Thank you.